It's always amazed me that you can take this boring, rigid sheet of plywood and convert it into something that is both beautiful and flexible, which ultimately you can use to create something that inspires. Ooh. In this video, you'll see how the product is built so that you can make one at home. But even if you don't build one, there's a ton of great learning that you don't want to miss. You'll learn how to integrate batteries that are rechargeable via USB-C. We'll talk about curve patterns that can be laser cut in wood or even 3D printed. We'll also learn how to control fuzzy skin on prints. And you'll learn how to use a ball switch in your circuit so that you can turn things on and off just with a tilt. Okay, that's enough. Let's get to work. Here's a quick snapshot of everything that's going into this build. If you do decide to make it, you've got links to everything in the description. Now really quick, I have to say, this is not a 3D modeling tutorial. If any of you out there, you want a full video on how I created this in Onshape, I'd be happy to produce that video. Just let me know in the comments. Okay, let's get started now by taking a look at kerfing, which is just the process of weakening a rigid material with this pattern of holes. Now kerfing is really easy to make. I'll show you a quick example here in Onshape. First, you'll create the start of a symbol pattern like I'm doing here. Next, you want to repeat this on one axis. I'm going to repeat it many times so that I have extra pattern available. And once that's done, repeat it on another axis, like so. Now from this template, whatever size I need, I can select by creating a large rectangle. And then I'll extrude inside of that rectangle. In this case, three millimeter, because that's the thickness of the wood. And now we have a preview of the curved pattern. Then I can right click on the surface of this and export as a DXF. All I have to do then is open up the DXF, send this to my S1, and it'll have this laser cut in just minutes. Now the cool thing is, if you don't have a laser cutter yet, and you really want to make this, you can always print it on your 3D printer. Simply export the part in Onshape, and then print the STL. It's not quite as flexible, but you get something very similar. Now I do have to mention that Xtool sponsored this video, but I'm not going to try to like hard sell or market the product to you, but I think all makers should have both a 3D printer in their space and a great laser cutter like Xtool, which in my opinion is the best brand. Now in this project, if you're happy with 3D printing, that's okay, but there are clear advantages and disadvantages between the two. One is obviously material. If you like the look of wood, that's only something you can achieve with a laser cutter in a project like this. And the other, of course, is rapid prototyping. On the 3D printer, it took about an hour and 30 minutes to print this small sample, while I was able to laser cut a larger piece from wood in less than eight minutes. So if you like prototyping fast and having a wide range of materials, it's pretty awesome to have a machine like this in your makerspace. If you are interested in picking one up and you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Okay, here are three curve samples that I'm trying to choose from. We've got the 3D print, the lighter color wood, and then the darker stained wood. Let's temporarily place those on the 3D model so we can decide what color combination is best. Here's dark wood with blue and red. That looks pretty good. And here's what the lighter wood looks like. I'm not so sure about that one. Let's try yellow and blue. I think that's a pretty cool combination. First with the dark wood, here it is with the lighter wood. And this combination in the end was my favorite, but let me know what you think in the comments. All right, it's time to start building now. Let's run through the parts and pieces really fast. This is the ball switch. And as you tilt it up and down, the ball will roll forward and backward, closing or opening the circuit. We then have the TP4056, which is a small module for recharging lithium batteries. This is the rechargeable battery. It's an 18650 inside of this case with two cables to make soldering easy. We've got this little bolt and heatable insert, which will lock everything together later. And then we have this small cob LED strip with adhesive backing. Note that this LED strip is rated for five volts, but we're only going to feed in directly from the battery a nominal 3.7 at its highest about 4.2 volts. So it'll always be under just slightly dimmer than its max potential, but it simplifies the whole circuit and the light output is pretty good. Okay, let's start assembly now. You'll first insert the ball switch through this hole so the legs just poke out like so. Now this hole positions the ball switch at an angle so that no matter which face the light is on, it's either off or on. That gives us a total of three on positions and three off positions with no visible switches. Now this switch will control power to the Cobb LED connected in series on the positive wire. 
with the other leg connected to the charging module on the positive. Let's quickly cut and strip a little bit of extra wire. I think we'll need this. We'll first solder this wire to positive out on the module, and we'll then solder the black cable of the LED light to negative out on the charging module. When you're done, it should look something like this. While we're here, let's solder the battery pack as well. Our red cable goes to battery plus, and the black cable goes to battery negative. Now soldering on the module is complete, and it should look like this. Let's now slide the module inside of the 3D print until the charging port goes through this hole. Do make sure that the module snaps inside this wall so that it doesn't slip loose later. Now at last, solder each remaining red cable to its own leg on the ball switch. And since this is a tight space, what I recommend is just glob a bunch of solder on the end of your iron and carefully make contact. And now on this side, and that looks pretty good. I'll put a bit of hot glue here to make sure that things never shift and touch. That would be a short circuit. And maybe just a little here too to play it safe to make sure that that module doesn't move. Okay, now let's insert the battery pack and run the cables down like so. Now we can do the fun part, which is wrapping the LED strip around the core. Just peel off the backside and wrap around and around. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm leaving just a little bit of space between. Keep in mind that this is one meter in length, so if you have the same product, then a technique like this should give you the same results. Now this is pretty sticky, but just to play it safe, I'm gonna add a bit of hot glue here to make sure it never slips loose. And maybe just a dab down here too. All right, quick test, and that is working. Let's try out the diffuser and see how it looks. Wow, that is cool. That looks really nice. And by the way, if you've never done fuzzy skin before, you can do it just by painting it on so you can control exactly where you want it, where you don't want it, and here's what it looks like. Awesome results. Okay, let's do the heat insert now. We'll push that through to here. And now let's put together all the parts. I thought about keeping this on, but I think it's gonna get in the way, so let's leave that here. And let's get the wood in first. I think having it offset like this is the best way to start, so you can get the first notches in and then slowly guide the others around as you go. Okay, this is kind of moving. It's a little bit tricky, it feels like, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. This offset technique of having the starter side first is good. And I've almost got these others in there. This is definitely working well. I recommend don't push too hard because you could possibly break these little legs. All right, that's one side in. Let's put in the diffuser. And I feel like this side is gonna be more difficult. Okay, let's line this up and make sure that it's square on both the red and the blue side. And making sure this is snug. Actually, this is kind of working. It seems to be easier than the other side. And at last, let's thread in this bolt. And here we have it. As you can see, we'll rotate on different faces. Pretty cool, I like how that turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments or if there's any way to improve this. And of course, if you love making and learning through projects like these, then please consider liking and subscribing. I've got a lot of great ideas and I'll be publishing them soon. Thanks for watching.